Okay, this is the cutesy girl. Mm, cannot wait. There's gorgeous hairdresser. Aww. The next sequence of events was so occurring to me. This is my face. Looks like this. I can say it's buckle up. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the fast and easy way to make a beautiful website. <laughs> wondering why I always wear this scraggly ass top sleep t-shirt that you're like emotionally attached to that would be this the bitch is back it's smoothie season the only ingredient I don't have is half a banana some oat milk coconut water hydration why not dull dark sweet cherries I got my blueberries one scoop of this chocolate protein some mushroom peanut butter I don't want to like waste my double espresso so we're just going to use some instant Hazelnut coffee, the perfect smoothie if you're a coffee lover. It's going in there, a little bit. Brown coffee for texture. Mm. Oh, look at this piece of hair. Second full day back, I'm going for a haircut, cannot wait. It's lovely, but at the same time, it's so unmanageable. I hope you enjoyed the little montage. Catch you up real quick. Yes, the boyfriend came. We had a wonderful week in New York. And this crazy thing happened at all of the East Coast airports and he was trying to get back to vancouver for like three days so yeah my heart goes out to anyone that was stuck in that whole mess i'll be honest i haven't really felt secondhand stress like that in a hot minute they we're trying to like put him on flights two or three days later he would have missed his parents i'm all about following your instinct following your gut trying to do that without questioning it when that man's third flight got cancelled all of a sudden i was just like i have to go with you packed a bag in 15 minutes I was lying on my bed in my pajamas one minute and i'm deciding to go to vancouver the next minute jump in the uber for some reason his seat got cancelled on the way thank god he screenshotted his boarding tickets they deleted everything on the app winged it and we got through went to the boarding gate for boston it was delayed by an hour which means we would have missed our connecting flight calmly went to the help desk i think we might have got the one lady on the ticket desk that was actually resolving things for people but really helped us out she was just like look the direct flight that you usually get usually we keep the exits row free people on standby all day was such a sequence of events chalk it up to my imagination if you want to truly someone that's learned to pay attention the next sequence of events my granddad kind of vibes sitting next to me and they were trying to fill out their insurance claim oh they were just having such trouble with it so i helped them get set up on their insurance app it was like this whole thing I swear to god this man looked into my soul this is your good deed for the day thank you just saying for the story the way he said it like the way he looked into my eyes no and then i swung around i see my favorite Brooklyn DJ behind me. I just knew, I knew in that moment I was gonna make this flight. So it's not a guaranteed seat. You have to wait till everyone else boards. And if there is a seat free for you, you get it. Watch out for the signs. Anyway, we were absolutely thrilled. We got to Vancouver and I ended up staying for I think eight, eight days. I just knew the moment I landed that it was, we were meant to go together. Guys, it was 
sunny beautiful weather all week we went to the beach we went to the swimming pool i felt like i was on proper vacation that was my kind of saga my adventure my story i don't know i like sharing my little synchronicity stories in the hopes that it might help you watch out for the signs but it did me good it's been good to have like so much physical support of my partner i really did need it my dad surgery there's still a lot of fallout stuff there's still a lot of like decisions coming up having my little emotional moments and processing stuff in it's, it's been tough I actually filmed that whole first day back for a tiktok vlog so i will link it down below i know i've been terrible at linking things recently like saying i've put something on tiktok and then i haven't but this one is also kind of inadvertently show you how i pull myself out of a bit of a depressing slump how i get back into the flow you see me cleaning my flat and talking about that i'll leave it in the description or you can just check me out on tiktok same as my instagram just fine that it's really hard to make content when he's around which is why i still love living on my own i can still do all of my online bits a lot easier. A little, little, little bit behind on my work deadlines, like my actual contracts with sponsorships, which is making me a little bit anxious. Some things done when I get back, we'll see. I got this vintage t-shirt from Awoke Vintage and I love it. It's got planets on the back and on the front and I love it. Okay, I've got you balancing on a box of tissues right now, but these are the shoes that I'm going for. Um, these were the other pair of like vintage eBay find little mules. They're so fab. I was meant to show you them in that uh, haul slash outfit that I shot. The reason it never went up is because I just, I hated it. So this is the little outfit for the day. The little planetary tee. Guys, I've just been living in these speltum shorts. These are actually the mediums. I usually wear the small because I kind of got them for my boyfriend and I don't know. I just think they look better on girls. UK eight to ten or a us four to six i would just say if you want speltum shorts get them in the small i brought the linen speltum ones that i got to vancouver lived in them lived in them i just don't know how people do denim shorts in the summer like i can't imagine something more uncomfortable like denim wadged up my arse in the summertime when it's 32 degrees if you can do it power to you i can't so to me this is like the perfect little outfit i just put on some concealer brow gel little bit of blush so I don't get like depressed looking at myself in the hairdresser's chair looking like an egg. Put on this old lip liner which I fundamentally don't agree with. I just could not find my favorite one. I feel like it's a rule that you have to have a good hair day on the day you're getting a haircut. I've got my haircut. This is Shara, my gorgeous gorgeous hairdresser of the last few years who sorts me out. I honestly feel like you give me like a celeb haircut. Like that's how oh, great you tell are. Tell me more. Okay, so I honestly like this yeah. is the vibe that suits me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like we're phasing out the curtain bangs, layered, longer in the front, less curtain bangy suits mm -hmm. me. Um, so I think kind of the same vibe, but just like yeah. weight out, lighter, shorter, lighter, airier. airier. Yeah. The, the majority, like the weightiness of my hair, to come up to maybe like that armpit crease. See, so like where this is like a little like help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all of the weight now seems to be here, this section In here. the back and like here. Yeah, that's right? where I feel like it's kind of built up the most. The front is actually quite nice. The front in this section of my head yeah. like feels right. So we can just side. go through and kind of like connect the dots a little bit yes. from like that old stuff. Yeah. Bring that in and then like tapered end. Okay. I would say. Yeah, this is like, this is this still is like, like a little like end. beefy right yes. through here. So we'll just like soften it. Give it a cute so baby doll. Useful aging you backwards. Like, hey, what's going on? I love Shara. She always gives me exactly what I ask for. One caveat of the day is that in this dire heat, the soles of my shoes have like the glue is melted, and I don't know if it's something they can fix on the spot. But I'm sure gonna try. Any chance of an on the spot shoe repair or not? Just, yeah, just glue it. Back. Not a big deal? No, big deal. Okay, cool. Just Thank you. Glue is still moving around a little bit. Oh, love when light in the apartment looks like this. This is my favorite. This is precarious. I still don't have my tripod. If you were looking for a cheap celeb 
skin hack. I got it on the shopping website. That sounds like a rainforest. I've just gotten up. I'm a little puffy and round. <laughs> it doesn't exactly fit my face very well. I do strap it on pretty tight, but yesterday I got brain freeze. So I ended up just kind of holding it on my face like this. I think the ones with the double band would be better, but I usually just tie this up more so near the top of my head. I can't believe I'm talking to you seriously. I also just think it gives you a bit of cold therapy if I've got like migraines or- Okay, so I'm taking it off. Oh, ow, 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 my hand. Okay, my face is gonna be a bit red, but I think I'm a lot less moon facey. Like overall, she's looking good. See the hollows of my cheekbones kind of coming in again. Cheap and cheerful. Don't get me wrong, I love new face, like the microcurrent. I feel like that's great for lift. Like if you were to do the ice mask and new face microcurrent or some kind of microcurrent device, like you would be red carpet level snatch. But I find that I don't always need the lift. Like sometimes I could do with a bit of a, just like a tightening on my forehead just to lift my brows a bit. But on the day to day, it's more of a deep puff. I need. It's actually a little bit, days like this are a little bit more apprehensive than exciting for me sometimes, but I'm trying to reframe it in my mind and just be excited because I don't know. I don't really recognize a lot of the things I do as accomplishments, but I think today is like a nice little memory. It's a nice little accomplishment. So I'm going to go get ready. Blow dry is still intact. I just have to find something appropriate to wear. It is so grim in New York right now. It's kind of that like muggy, dull a lot of the day's weather, but it's still like 30 degrees Celsius and 88% humidity. The dress that I got altered, the mini dress. I don't know. It's sunny. It's really hot today. I said I would link the shorts, the like boy shorts that I wear underneath like super short dresses and I, I didn't link them. Will this time because I have the visual reminder to do so. These are the ones I'll be wearing today. So these are nude ones. Don't have any compression. I do advise sizing up. Things run like super, super small. I would always, always check their sizing chart. I'm wearing something low-waisted. I'll go for these ones. These are, again, seamless. Uh, this waistband is very stretchy. It doesn't kind of dig in or anything. Okay, this is the makeup. Just went for like a soft smoky eye. Um, I mostly switched to gold. The one thing I like about these John Hardy bracelets, like they're expensive, I got them through work, but they're reversible. So I've just switched them to the gold side instead of the silver. I have this gorgeous um, Montserrat necklace. This is the fitty, these are the shorts underneath. They go down further, but I add that bit of extra fabric to this dress. Cause I do think it's just a few inches too short. Relatively classic. I would say old and other stories bag, which just really comes in handy a lot of the time. Cutesy girl, wear my Harry Styles sunglasses. <laughs> Urban Outfitters while I was in Vancouver and boom, I feel like, you know, just adds a little spice. So me and Christy filmed a commercial. I'm just keeping an eye out on it. Yeah, you're, you, one eye there, I'll do you. Um, and it's out and it's kind of all over Times Square, the subway, it's all over New York. So we're just waiting for it to come up. Waiting patiently like this to have our little <laughs> Times Square moment. to catch it we, we we really wanted to get both of us like a 10 second it was so quick it's like such a tight on. edit we have to wait like 15 minutes for it to come on i'm gonna go back later and just stand there for both of us yes but to i help uh, christy get some photos now because i actually have to go i have a very business important. call a work call there's Times square right behind us very cool experience in fairness to be able to do together i'm very grateful made it out of midtown alive it's the wind really started picking up there right as we were um kind of shooting yeah, today was fun also very quickly reminded that there is absolutely no point putting on makeup or trying to look nice in high summer in new york so i couldn't stay longer but christy stayed because apparently there's two cuts so they're really short but there's one that has more of me in it and then there's one that has i think more of christy's shots you know in our minds we we're hoping to get like really cute videos i can leave new york now i can say that i made it to times square on a commercial ad, such a funny shot of me eating a dumpling in it. Like they did me dirty on that shot. You know, if you're in New York, catch me outside. All right, how are y'all doing? Have my forbidden 6 p.m. latte. One more thing to edit, and then I'm on top of all of my 
like return to home deadlines, which I feel like I've just been um, hanging over my, looming over my head, should I Tomorrow's say. Tomorrow's Friday and I plan to just get cracking on editing this vlog. So it's been just a full on week back of shooting, editing, running around, um, but I'm starting to catch up with people now. I missed my friends, you know. I thought that I would show you a little sneak peek of new Lover Sunday or like updated Lover Sunday. I have really fallen off the face of the earth with the Instagram. But I'm okay with that. You know, sometimes creative projects dip. It's not the end of the world. I think like the concept is alive and well in my spirit. I just really haven't had the manpower. The thing is when you guys wear it out, I think other people that don't know anything about me or Lover Sunday end up finding my website and finding the pieces, which is kind of what I always wanted. Anyway, I have a new colorway in the classic unisex t-shirt. Slightly longer, but not too long. Like I have a short, body like torso length fit the same as kind of the t-shirt I wore with the planets all over it over a pair of shorts like it definitely lengthens out my body a little bit I'm still kind of deprogramming myself from high-waisted everything of refamiliarizing myself with other silhouettes red on red sweater is a big favorite and I haven't done it in a t-shirt yet so this is the red on red lover Sunday. I just love that it's kind of subtle. These are so soft and they wash so well. They're away labels, they just come off like that. This will definitely be limited, but I wanted to do something fun for summer. This is the lilac with red. I love pink and red, lilac and red together. Like the model that I use, everything is made to order so that there's no waste. That's why everything is like a little bit more expensive. Somebody else handles like the heavy lifting. Fortunately comes creative control, sacrifices you have to make. And one of those things is that when you embroider, you have to use backing for it to stitch. One had white backing and one had black and I prefer the white backing. So the other one that had the white backing was way more neatly cut around. So I do dislike that inconsistency with how the backing looks and how neat it looks. But just FYI, the backing does soften and sort of like break away over time with a few washes. Also just tears away really easily like this. I just wanted to kind of mention that it's not something you should have to do. It should just look something like that. So however, I think it's worth it for the beautiful embroidery where a lot of t-shirts that creators come out with are always like screen printed and a lot of the times they just don't wash well or aren't very nice quality like I want this to be in your closet for years and years and years and the embroidery is never going to just fade or get kind of gross but the next drop is going to have two prints see any ideas <laughs> there's a little lover sunday update that you didn't ask for <laughs> a thank you to this week's sponsor my good friends squarespace sure you all know who squarespace are from my videos by now but if you don't or you need a reminder maybe it's just the right time squarespace are the all-in-one platform to design a website you can do it all from the comfort of your own home you do not need any experience because they make it super easy made templates that you can fully customize and change around my website website for Lover Sunday is an e-com style template but you can have any style of website when it comes to Squarespace an e-portfolio a blog it is you need Squarespace has you covered subscriptions memberships they even do merch so you can upload your designs and they will take care of manufacturing it posting it out to people got a bunch of cool stuff on there try it for yourself for free for two weeks play around with squarespace.com slash tarmer that's my link it'll also be in the description below with code tarmer you'll get 10 percent off all of your future billing it's been a day i'm here with my emotional support pillow i had a really interesting experience when i was leaving the airport coming from vancouver back to new york one of those really jarring u.s immigration experiences which i haven't had for a while haters are going to hate me for saying this I take everything a sign. Yes, this is going to be introspective time with Tara. So if you enjoy these segments, buckle up through immigration, you talk to an immigration officer, they kind of just like look you up and down, ask you a few questions. It's usually pretty routine. You have a work visa, not a tourist visa. They do tend to ask you a few more questions. I almost feel like it's the ones that are fresh out of like the interrogation course um, that kind of have this really shitty attitude. First time doing it there, had this experience everywhere in every country that there is pre-clearance because they literally have the power to revoke your visa on the spot or, uh, you know, stop you from getting on your flight. You know, he roughed me up mentally. Not so much in recent years now that everyone kind of understands how social media works and that can be a career. And from seven years ago, being at immigration and trying to explain to like a 50 or 60 year old man that social media is a job to now going all of the way over to the other spectrum with this guy who felt like I didn't do enough, that I didn't earn 
my place here or earn my visa in different ways just kept asking me like why what what makes me special what sets me apart from other social media people on this visa or like why do I deserve it because apparently he didn't think you know 250,000 followers was enough people with one or two million followers like you're not as good as them you don't have as many followers as them so why do you deserve the visa like why are you on this visa honestly I was really taken aback because I'd answered him as best to my ability there's lots of facets to what I do he did I have YouTube plaques I was like yes I have a silver one and he was just like well why don't you have the gold one and nothing I could say about myself was good enough for him in the end I just said look I've been through this process twice and my visa has been approved twice I just stood my ground and he gave me back my passport pretty fast after I said that with hypnotherapy and talking about signs all the time um, I'm forced to look at everything with a different lens settled like the next day or the day after I kind of went back on the experience and I asked myself was there anything this experience was trying to show me because it was such a like emotional experience and I'm not saying you have to go back and look at every experience this way he was questioning me it felt like he was just a wall of every self-limiting belief that I had, like th sprinkle a few haters in there as well. Just speaking to someone who was absolutely determined to misunderstand like, everything that you say about yourself. One or two other things have happened since in the past week that have kind of been forcing me to ask myself that question. Even just like today going to see the billboard in Times Square. Like, earlier, like I felt more apprehensive than excited. Like now I'm excited, but I have to try really hard to be excited about it because when it comes to work and career stuff, I think I have a lot of blocks around just like celebrating things that I achieve. And like, as a human being, I will celebrate myself all day long, every day. Like I will happily sit here and tell you, I think that I'm a great person because I fucking believe that, you know? Anything that you think about yourself that you're feeling that resistance towards, probably an indicator of a self-limiting belief that you could probably do with working on. I feel like this question's being reflected back to me all week because I am scripting so much. I was scripting so much in Vancouver. My boyfriend actually got into it with me as well. I am affirming all of these amazing things that I want to bring into my life especially on sort of a career and social media level it just made me think you know I'm calling in this absolute greatness for myself but I can't seem to of so career and work I have a hard time accepting the things that I've done that are great or the things that I do that are great and just that self-limiting block became very obvious but I don't think any answer would have been good enough for him the answers I was giving were very reserved I couldn't really think of that many specific things on the spot even though I've done two visa applications I've portfolios and portfolios worth of 12 years of achievements because I didn't really have any value in them myself and um, I didn't see them as achievements to be that proud of like I just as a person I don't really value career stuff it was just food for thought you know because i'm trying to achieve a level of greatness in what i do but i haven't really accepted the greatness in myself it's kind of what i'm going to be working on just on a personal little side note level um, and i think that this line of inquiry can probably be applied to any area or theme in your life make it a little bit interactive and like just get out your phone right now start a new note and just like right at the top just say like what makes me great that's what I'll be doing kind of in my scripting journal this week is building that confidence because I think scripting is amazing for getting ballsy with your affirmation trying to draw stuff into their lives manifest what have you I think it's an important activity to do a little bit of shadow work you know I love talking about this stuff so I would love to know your thoughts your two cents thank you all for tuning in have a fantastic week Mwah. bye <laughs>